praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise God. Let's also, um, I just uh, just remembered to uh, pray for my barber, um, Alan, that the Lord will continue to minister. In fact, um, he's the one that pretty well got my, that the Lord's steering me towards this sermon today. And also, we got a prayer, uh, somewhat of a praise report. Uh, Sister Bishop and I were at Arby's on uh, Thursday, and we were just sitting there eating, and one of the workers came over to us and said she, she was almost in tears. She said, I'm in pain, and um, I just feel like the Lord has directed me. She says, I just feel like God is what she said. God has directed me over here because you people are people of prayer. And so, but you, you know, can you please pray for my shoulder right now? Because it, you know, it's giving me a lot of trouble. And so we, we, did, we, we prayed for her in that. And so it just shows that through, you know, trying times, God, you know, we sometimes we look around and we don't have very many people here and we wonder if God's really moving and doing anything. And, and uh, God does see us. God does see us. And, and there's something good is about ready to happen, but we just got to be ready. In fact, I uh, was studying the, on the number 20 again, and, and i just not going to spend much time on this, but I just want you to know that, you know, people look at 20 and say, I thought this was supposed to be perfect vision. Well, in the Bible, it means uh, perfection. Yes, it does mean perfection, but you go through a trial, mm -hmm. and it perfects you, you know. Israel went through some trials and it took 20 years and um, uh, Jacob labored for 20 years before he was set free from his father-in-law you know, in the land that he was not supposed to be in but the lot come back to the promised land so there's many things that we need to understand that God is trying to teach us through these trying times and we're almost at the end of it praise God in fact in the Jewish, Jewish calendar we're Right now, I think it's this month or last month, you know, we're pretty well entering into a new year, so get excited what God's about ready to do. If you have your Bibles, will you turn with me today to the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6? It's a very um, simple scripture. We've heard it many times, we've quoted it many times, and um, it just simply says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful thought when you begin to see and understand what Paul is really writing here. It's not just, you know, a cat phrase catchphrase, but it's something that's very, very important that the church needs to understand. And I took my title from uh, somebody that I listen to once in a while, and they always close out with what they're saying, so I can't take the, you know, the full credit to this, but when this lady is finished, she always says, stay sane out there. And so today, my title is Stay Sane, is what Paul's saying, stay Sing. Praise the Lord. Can we just worship the Lord right now? Hallelujah. We love and appreciate you. We love and appreciate you for your love, your mercy, your grace, for your beautiful spirit that is here to know that you are the one that is in control. As Isaiah said, I see the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Even though the newspapers were saying that the king was dead and that there was no hope for Israel. But we find that it, as Isaiah went into the temple, he realized that the true king was still in control. That he holds, hallelujah, the world in his hand. And that he looks at the world as nothing more than a speck at the end of his finger. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah, that we know that you got us. You have us in control. And that we know that, Lord, that you are going to do something wonderful. And that you're going to do something mighty. And we know, hallelujah, that there is something that's already to happen. We can feel it right now. We can feel it in our spirit. Minister, Lord,
Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you just turn to your neighbor and say, stay sane. Stay sane. Praise the Lord, and you may be seated. Praise the Lord. One thing that I have really begun to understand more than anything uh, before is that we need to be aware of the enemy schemes. I know we talk about it many times, but sometimes we do not grasp what the enemy is up to. We know that Satan's desire is, is that to cause chaos, and we see chaos right now, you know, that is going on in our world. What has happened in the spiritual realm is beginning to enter into the uh, physical realm. We find that in John chapter 10, 10, that Jesus said that the devil comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy. But we now have this one hope with Jesus said, even though the devil comes to do these things, and that he wants to destroy our lives, and he wants to take over, steal our joy, and he wants to kill the peace that God has given us. But Jesus says, I just want you to understand, when you begin to feel that the chaos is going on, that he has come to give life, but more than, than anything else, but he's come to give it more abundantly. I don't know about you, but that gives me hope. That gives me something to shout about this morning. Yes. That Jesus has come to give life and more abundantly. The one thing that we can understand about the devil today, and that is that he is nothing more than an impersonator. He's an impersonator. He is like... The Bible says, you know, Peter wrote, he says that he's like a roaring lion. We need to understand that. He is like a roaring lion. A lion roar uh, can be heard up to five miles away. That's why he's called the king of the jungle. Five miles away. And his intent is to terrify whoever hears it. The lion's roar is to establish their territory and to communicate their power. And that's what the enemy is trying to do today. Is that he's trying to communicate to us is that I want you to understand that I, this world is still mine. But we know, hallelujah, that there is a greater one. So, but his roar is, does nothing. It's only threatening, but it's powerless unless we give it into the fear and allow the lion to overtake us. Our enemy, Satan, roars. His threats, his doubts, his allegations and to terrify us and to give him up so that we can be defeated. But hallelujah, but we know one thing. He's only a personator because we know the true king. We know the, the, the true line of the tribe of Judah. And he is the king of all kings. Hallelujah. And oh, it's time that the church begins to worship. Hallelujah. I said the church needs to worship. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Who our true king is. Hallelujah. We know that this enemy right now has released a very dangerous, a very dangerous disease that's worse than the pandemic that we are facing right now. It's a more, much more dangerous. It's much more infectious. We find that this disease is causing, you know, all kinds of problems in our society today. This uh, disease that one scholar named it. You know, I was listening to and he named this one disease. It's called STD. You know, some people will think of STD, they think of sexual transmitted disease. But what he was saying was that it's a spiritual transmitted disease. A spiritual transmitted disease. What is happening that's being infected into our souls today is fear, worry, and anxiety. You know, it's been released into the society. No wonder Jesus cautioned us in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that men should always to pray. I said that men should always to pray and not be stricken with fear. That men should always to pray, hallelujah, and not to be overcome by panic. Right. That men should always to pray and not to pass out. Jesus said that, you know, we are to pray. Hallelujah. And Paul backs this up when he wrote to the timid, Timothy. When Timothy was going through some struggles in his life and he could feel the chaos and the, and the pressure that was coming against him. And he began to encourage him. And he told Timothy, I want you to understand, Timothy, that what you're feeling right now is not of God. I want you to understand, Timothy, that God never gave this spirit that you are feeling. The spirit of fear is here to try to destroy you. But I want you to understand, Timothy, that God has given you, a, hallelujah, the power of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. How do we overcome hallelujah. the enemy? 
Hallelujah. We need to understand that God is still in control. And that God truly does love each and every one of us. Hallelujah. We know that the reality is fear is everywhere at an insane reality. At an insane level. We've uh, been listening to uh, the news and they were saying that because of the, you know, the pandemic, the people are you know, sitting at home and, and they're getting a little bit discouraged. And some of them, you, know, you constantly hear the bombardment of the, you know, the riots and everything that's going on. That Some are even taking their lives. And it's such, such a sad thing that people you know, uh, are going to their doctors and, and they're in fear and there's discouragement and, and all this. And everything is going on. You know, there's the pressure of the, you know, it's an insane level. But we need to understand, churches, that we can overcome this satanic uh, disease. With the antidote, hallelujah, that was happened how, close to 2,000 years ago, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. We can overcome this, hallelujah, yeah. because we have the Spirit of yeah. Christ, yeah. hallelujah, that's within us. Yeah. Hallelujah. We know that we can overcome this because God is greater than he is in the world. Right. We find that when Paul wrote to the church of the of the of Philippi, he was he had a lots of reasons, every reason to be worried. He had every reason to be fearful. Here he was in prison. He didn't know if he was going to live or die. It was one of his last prison letters that he began to write. And so we find that he's here. He could easily just gave up and said, where is God? Why isn't God, you know, in this situation? We all, he began to, he could easily begin to uh, worry because he saw that there was loved ones and friends that were dying, you know, for the name of Christ. And he had lots to worry about because he could see, hallelujah, that there was false teaching that was beginning to creep into the church. Where is the church going to go from here? He, you know, he could easily have worried about all that. He could hear the reports of people that were falling away and going into strange doctrines and the strange things of life. And so he, could, he looked at those things. But we find that, hallelujah, in spite of all that he was facing, that Paul began to write this, you know, powerful truth so that we can navigate through this satanic uh, pandemic. Paul wants you to know that what you are facing right now, I faced it. And I want you to know that, hallelujah, that you can overcome this. When you may feel a little bit hopeless, you may feel a little bit stressed out, you may feel like you're being pulled in every direction and you don't know which way to go, but you may even feel like surrendering, surrendering your life and saying, what's the point anymore? I might as well just give up. You know, there's no point in just continuing on. But hallelujah, but I want you to say, do not because greater is he is within you yeah, than he yeah, is in the world. Hallelujah, um, come on, greater is he is in the world, greater than you than he is in the world. We need to seize on this truth. We need to get a hold of this truth. We need to remind ourselves of this truth. Hallelujah. We find that Paul in his letter, he's not just giving us a little, you know, a suggestion when he begins to write. This you know wonderful truth. He's not just you know saying that you know you know if you would do this, then everything's going to be okay. No, what Paul is saying is he's he's commanding us, Hallelujah, to be optimistic. He said, I want you to be optimistic. I want you to always to put your you know don't you know put your head in the sand. I'm not talking when I say optimistic. I'm not saying that you know that we need to pretend that you know life is nothing but full of lollipops and gumdrops, and oh, what a wonderful life this will be. We're not singing that type of song. That's not that. We, we are dealing with an evil reality. We know that. We're dealing with this evil reality that has been released into the spiritual realm. Hallelujah, that has begun to, you know, affect, you know, society today. It is here. Hallelujah. But we know, understand that if we stand firm in faith and get a strong grip on the anchor of hope. Hallelujah. What I love about the anchor of hope, that this anchor is not pointed downward. Yeah. That this anchor is pulled, pointed upward. Oh. And this, this anchor, hallelujah, has been hooked on to the throne of God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. We have a hope in Jesus this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we can stand firm. And Jesus has the ability. 
abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. I said according to the power that works within us. It's not a power that works from without us. It's a power that works within us. We right. need to understand what we have in us. The same hallelujah power that walked among men. The same power that you know touched the blind and caused them to see and the deaf to hear and, uh, and the sick to be healed. Hallelujah. We need to understand that the same power that raised up the dead is the same power that lives in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Man. Get a hold of that. Understand. Hallelujah. That, that is taking residence inside of you. We know that this pandemic may try to infect me. I'm talking about this STD, the spiritual transmitted disease. You know, the pandemic may try to infect and may bring us down. Hallelujah. It may be used the situation to bring me down so low that I don't feel like I can ever put myself up. But I refuse to stay down, church. Come on, I refuse to stay down. I put my faith and trust in Jesus. I know that he will lift me up as long as I learn through it. As long as I learn through it. That's the problem. A lot of times we don't want to learn through it. We want God to just, you know, mm -hmm. take us out of this. Mom. But we need to learn through it. Hallelujah. We find that Paul begins to start. He says, I want you to understand, don't, do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. Do not be pessimistic. It does not help anyone. This is why I call it the spiritual transmitted disease. Because when it, one gets affected by it, then others will be affected. Paul is saying, I want you to understand, you know, Philippi, I love you with all my heart. And I know that you are going through some severe persecution. And that there are those that are pointing the finger at you. But don't be anxious. Don't be pessimistic. Don't worry about what's going to happen to me when I'm here in prison. I want you to understand, hallelujah, the only thing that you need to no, is that, hallelujah, that being optimistic helps you to see a better outcome. It helps you to see a better outcome. Don't be, you know, anxious, but be optimistic of what God is going to do in your life. Then he went on to say that I want you to understand something now, that we are to choose to be joyful. I love what Paul said when he said that, choose to be joyful. That means, hallelujah, that Paul, you know, is suggesting to us, hallelujah, uh, joyful. Hallelujah is the command. Hallelujah, joyful means that you need to command your spirit. You need to command your will. Hallelujah, Paul understood how that God created us. He knew what God, how God created us. When we feel hunger, pain, do we just stand around and go, so, oh, I'm just so hungry? What do you do? What do you do when you begin to feel the hunger, pain? Pangs in your in your stomach. All what you what you do is you feed it. Amen. You feed it, and so if you don't feel like doing anything, if you don't feel like doing anything, what do you do? You just don't do it. You buck up against it. You do everything in your power. You know you know that you don't want to do it. If you want to do something, you will do it. You know, be it right or wrong. Sometimes you would do it. Paul understood the power of the self will. That's what Paul was saying. It's the power of the self will. An old ancient teaching. The strongest makeup of man is the self will. That's what they were taught. The self will. It's so powerful that God, who created, who is the creator of all this universe and the creator of everything, who has supreme, uh, supreme power over every spirit. You know, in heaven and on earth, who has the power over all principalities, he still respects the self-will of man. He will not trespass against it. He will not force man to do what they do not want to do. Our our will can choose to joy or and not to and not to give in to worry. I know I love this story about Paul when he stood before, you know, uh uh, Agrippa the second when he said I just choose to be happy I choose to be happy we 
we, you have the power, hallelujah, to choose. You, you cannot control your situation, no. But you can, hallelujah, choose how you react to it. You can choose to, you know, to be continually be in the muddy grubs. You can continue to, you know, to complain and, and, and be all upset about what's happening. Or you can react in the right way and say, I know that I, my Redeemer liveth and He knows me. Hallelujah to that day. Come on, church. God knows that what you're going through right now is only going to help you to make you better. Oh, I do not worry about what's happening right now. When we do this, hallelujah, we are putting our back, our wheel back in place. This is what we're doing. We're putting our wheel back in place. And we're putting worry in its proper place. So, hey, worry, I just want you to know something. You're not in control of this situation. You're going to be put where you belong. Hallelujah. The reality is that we need to understand something. Hallelujah. Why do we worry so much? Is that worry is an action to the situation. It's an action to the situation. You're worried because you feel like you're losing control of it. The reality is that we never are going to be control that situation. Hallelujah. And so what we need is a tactic. What we need is something, hallelujah, to, you know, to keep this south will where it belongs. Hallelujah. So my tongue doesn't start running out. Come on. Right. Running out the mouth. So i spreading this spiritual transmitted disease, you know, of anxiety and worry. And, you know, what's going to happen next? What's, what's the news is saying? And oh, <coughs> oh, no, we are in trouble. So what do I do? Paul says, I want you to understand, and everything give thanks. Yes, Hallelujah. When we go to the Lord in prayer so often, what we do is that we bring to Him a list of complaints. We tell God all the things that we're going through, our woes and, and our troubles and our bills and, and you know, everything else that we you know that we're suffering with. And we tell Him, you know, God, I'm going through all this and you need to understand this and you need to do that and you need to, you know, here's your to-do list, God. Come on. I'm not getting much help here, but, you know, I'm not getting this to-do list here. If we focus on what's going wrong, we can falsely deceive ourselves into believing that God cannot fix what is going on in our lives. We would deceive ourselves. Huh. And so what happens is that we need to understand something. That Thanksgiving is a powerful weapon against a yes. spiritual transmitted disease. When you, we enter into prayer, we need to make sure that we spend some critical time. I mean some critical time. Hallelujah. How, what God has done for us in our lives. Hallelujah. We need to choose, hallelujah, to be thankful. I said it means to be choosing to do this. I don't care, hallelujah, if there's a leak in the roof. I don't care if, you know, my job's on the line. I don't care, you know, if the gas prices go up. I don't care, you know, if I only have a, a nickel in my pocket. I don't care about those things. I choose to be thankful of what God has done in my life. Hallelujah. I'm not going to complain about everything. I'm going to start thanking him because it could have been worse. Think about it. It could have been a whole lot worse. And we need to be intentionally be thankful. If we don't, if sometimes when we're so weak, and sometimes I feel that way, I'm so weak and I say, you know, I can't seem to see clearly because of the, you know, the commotion that's going on around and this disease that's beginning to infiltrate into my body. And I just don't feel right, you know, about, you know, certain things. And I can't see my way to thank him now. But, oh, hallelujah. And right now, what am I got to be thankful for? But if I choose to think about my past. Come on, church. When I think about my past. Hallelujah. I begin to thank Him. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord, that I was never exposed. Come on. How many of you are so thankful that God never exposed some of the things that you did? Right. 
You should have been exposed, but God said, no, I'm going to cover you with my blood. I'm not going to allow this to, to uh, interfere with the purpose and the plan for your life. I'm not going to allow this, you know, to, you know, begin to ruin your reputation. You know, so I'm going to cover you right now. Hallelujah. Oh, that's something right now. Do you have something to be thankful for your past? Hallelujah. It's been covered in the blood. Being thankful reminds our self-will. Hallelujah. That, oh, yes, God's still in control. He brought he did it before, and he's going to do it again. I said he did it before, yes, and he did it again. Man. What happens next when you become thankful is that Paul says is that the peace of God. Hallelujah. The thankfulness begins to activate his peace. It puts a century around your self-will. It puts it around your soul. Hallelujah. And it guards it. Hallelujah. When you feel like you're spinning under control, the century comes and says, all is well. Come on. All is well. That's what the Spirit of the Lord said. You know, just think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He has done for you. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Think of the goodness of Jesus. Oh, if you're not, you know, you're not losing control. You're still in my control. Come on. Yeah. You're not losing control. You're still in my control. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, what this means. Hallelujah, what Paul is using. He's using the concept from Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. And when this anointing of God, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the earth. He began to move, hallelujah, on the face of the bodies of the, of the waters. And think about this for a moment. That God who settled on the waters, the depths of the water, is the same God who settled on your mind. Hallelujah. He's the one that's keeping that spirit in control. He's the one that's saying, you know, self will you need to stand. Hallelujah. Do not let this enter in. Hallelujah. And begin to affect the soul. Come on. Don't right. let this come down in. But you begin to be thankful. Hallelujah. And when that begins to happen, then peace comes over you. Hallelujah. This happens without putting... A this cannot happen without putting a filter on our minds. We need a filter. Come on. We need a filter. We're, we're receptacles. We, we are responsible for what we bring into our mind. Hallelujah. And so what do we need to do? You know, you know, to put that filter on. What is that filter? Well, Paul goes on to say in verse 8 and 9 of the same chapter, he said, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever are things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if they're being a virtue, if they're being praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Think about those things. Right. Put your mind on those things. Hallelujah. When we control what enters in our mind, we can control the white yeah. noise. Hallelujah. I don't care what they're saying in the world. I don't care what the gloom and doom prophets are saying. I know, hallelujah, what the outcome is. And we're headed for a better day. Hallelujah. That's the, Jesus said when you hear wars and rumors of war, when you hear pestilence and earthquakes, when you hear the world spinning under control, lift up your head because your redemption draws it nigh. Come on. The desire for him is to steal your peace and your joy. And we need to protect it. I said we need to protect it. Yes. We need to get a mental picture and begin to speak good thoughts. Oh, hallelujah. You see, the thing is, is that people, you know, they use scriptures, but they don't really see, you know, what the scripture is really saying here. When you think back to Isaiah, and I know I used this quite a bit, but when Isaiah came in, it was gloom and doom. It was over. He thought life was finished until he saw the Lord high and lifted up. There was a key there when he saw the Lord high and lifted up. He saw the sheriffs you know, singing, hallelujah. They were saying what? Glory, glory unto God. What they were saying, if you look through the heavenly lens, if you sit in the heavenly places, if you look down, hallelujah, through God's lens, all you can see is glory. Oh, yeah. 
going to happen. Hallelujah. What we do when we do that is that we cut off anxiety and we cut off worry. And we put this spiritual transmitted disease where it belongs under the feet of Jesus. Amen. And guess where you are? I said, guess where you are? Hallelujah. You're sitting in heavenly places with Jesus. And so what's under your feet? I said, what's under your Come feet? On. You're on. not the head. I mean, you're not the tail. Come on. Right. You're not the tail. The Come tail on. doesn't tell the head what to do. Right. Come on. It's the head that tells the tail. Hallelujah. It's time to say Satan. Hallelujah. You know your days is coming. You know, hallelujah, that God's about ready to move. And your church is about ready to rise up. This is the time that God is saying, I want my church. Hallelujah. My people, which are called by my name. Hallelujah. Begin to humble themselves again and pray and be faithful and begin to worship me and praise me. When I Most spiritual people, they'll tell you, I don't know what's happening, but I know one thing. I love this. I know one thing. There's something good is about ready to happen. Don't get the spirit of Elijah after the, the defeat of Baal's prophets on the mount. Don't get that spirit. You say, well, what spirit was that? Elijah came up the mountain thinking, oh, all those people bowed their knees before, you know, God. And they said, Jehovah is God. They bowed their knees. Oh, what a wonderful revival. But what God was trying to tell uh, Elijah, don't you understand the reason why I allow, you know, Jezebel to send that threat. You need to understand something. You wanted, you saw the knees bended, but I saw something different. Right. You need to see something, you know, Elijah, that their hearts are still not bent. And I want the heart that is bent, not just the knees that's bent. And God, so what's happening right now in America is God is trying to not just get our knees to bend, but get our hearts to bend. Hallelujah. Come on, church. 
You got the antidote. How can you praise God? How can you have so much peace? Because it's the peace that passes all understanding. Come on. You guys know. I know that God's going to work it out. I can't, know. I can't tell you how he's going to do it. But I know he's going to do it. I got my hope in him. I saw my tat out of my car. Tell him I saw Toa. I'm not talking about negative things. I'm not going to allow it to you know, begin to enter into my mind. I de determine within myself. Hallelujah. I'm going to think of the good things of Jesus. And they're being praised. And they're being in virtue. Hallelujah. I'm going to think of these things. Stay sane. Hallelujah. As the one girl will say. Stay sane out there. Hallelujah. Don't get so caught up in all the commotion. Don't get caught up in the lies. Can we worship you? Come on. Come on, it touches their heart. 